I was Sierra on That So Raven. I was her really annoying next door neighbor. And that's everything that people tell you yes, is that you're annoying. Day. You are so adorable. And we all thought you were annoying because we were little girls too. We should have felt like a camaraderie because you're our age. It's like, <gasps> someone our age is on Disney Channel. But yeah. we were like, God, like if I was in her shoes, I would not be annoying to Raven. <laughs> right, right, right. There's no, <laughs> Raven would absolutely love me if I was love me. half her age. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. And welcome to another episode of Fangirl Central. Welcome back. I'm Amanda. And I am Amber. And we this are sisters. Is, we are sisters. <laughs> we, have, we always forget to say that. <laughs> well, we don't. I mean. On stage. If you don't know that we're sisters, like what? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, This is where f being a fangirl is central to our identity. That's and right. today we have such a special guest in the studio slash my apartment. Her name is Juliet Golia. Yeah. And she's right. a star. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yes, Absolutely. We all know and love her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you two know me. <laughs> Would you describe yourself as a fangirl? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, through and through. What communities do you take part in? <laughs> um, I'm a Harry. Mm -hmm. Harry's. I'm in the Harry's. Yes. So you but were a Harry girl? I was a Harry girl from the very beginning. So I'm a one direction. I'm a directioner. Okay. okay. Um, and just from day one. Harry Styles there was no other choice and like I have very strong opinions on every single member I met them Jesus. one what? time Jesus. yeah how should we just get into yes. it yeah um, so we'll break down the okay, whole story so I was living in New York I was working on a tv show called the Michael J Fox show mm -hmm. and we were doing I think we were doing press because we were like a month out of premiering mm. and I was doing an interview with Access Hollywood which like Saying it right now, my life was cool. Like yes. I was yes, 17 years old and I was just like, yeah, whatever. Like that was just my life. So that was fun. Um, I was doing an interview with Access Hollywood and for some reason, like I think it was also like the prime, it was 2013. It was the prime mm -hmm. of my obsession with mm -hmm. them too. And yeah. it was very hard for me to get through a sentence without bringing them up. And Absolutely. somehow like in my interview, I brought up One Direction. It had nothing to do with the show or my character really. Mm -hmm. Um and the lady interviewing me was like, oh, I'm actually going to be interviewing them tonight um, at the red carpet for the uh, This Is Us, their documentary. Oh Wait a second now, because yeah. now I know the exact date of what yeah, you're talking exactly. about. That's insane. Yeah. So I was like, that's cool. And just like went on with my life. Mm -hmm. And then I was telling uh, Betsy Brandt, who played my mom on the show, I was like, yeah, she's interviewing One Direction tonight. And Betsy was like, you have to go with her. Oh. And I was like. I mean, yeah, that'd be absolutely fantastic if Thank I went you, with her, but come on. And so Betsy went up to her and was like, you need to take <laughs> this girl to the One Direction premiere tonight. Oh. I didn't even have a change of clothes. I went straight from work. They like rushed me to get off set in time. I looked <gasps> what on horrific. Earth? I was just in like <gasps> a like Urban Outfitters like long maxi dress, but not cute. Uh -huh. Oh god, the maxi dress. It was 2013. It was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I think I still own the dress just because. You have to, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Um, I own my take me home tour outfit. Of course, you don't. <laughs> like, you don't get rid of these things. <laughs> anyway, I thought I was just going to be like snuck into the uh, premiere as like I was going to pretend to be like the sound guy and like hold a mic <laughs> or whatever mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just like be in the background. Two seconds before she was like. You're gonna interview them. No, wait. I'm not two kidding. Se two seconds. Two seconds before. This is and guys, I looked bad. Like that's all I can really remember about the day it was like just shiny, just so much shine. Oh, because oh, um, okay, seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> she gave me like a list of questions to ask them, which was Zane. Congratulations mm. on your engagement. Right. Oh so that no. Was the time. Right. It was that. Yeah, it I remember that time. being the topic of the and press. Another junket. question was. So what did you guys think of Miley Cyrus's VMA's performance? No. That's how old it is because oh, she had done. Yes, yeah. she twerked on yeah, Robin Thicke. It, it was crazy. Like that was the moment. And they were there. And what are they going to say about yeah, it? What? I mean, they didn't answer well. Like, but I will say, so I was like, I'm an actor, blah, blah, blah. And Harry goes, I thought you looked familiar. Oh no. my God. Yeah. And I was no. like. And he, he kissed me work. on the cheek twice. What? What? Yeah. What? Like a hello. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Juliet. Zane didn't say a word to me. Of I was course. Like, of Congrats course. on the engagement. He was like, 
Shy boy. Shut up. Shy. (laughs) He honestly said shut up. He was like, leave me alone. (laughs) Did you have any community there with you to understand what you were were going through? Okay. Okay. My mother. And one of um, Michael J. Fox's daughters came with me to the premiere. She met me after. And she was like a fan, but I think she was kind of like. Is she younger or older than She's my age, but I think just like a little more grounded in reality. She was Michael J. Fox's daughter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He was Marty McFly. Harry Styles, are you kidding? Come on. At that age? Yeah. And he knew me, or at least he said he did? No, he probably did. was like, you He's like around, he's like two years older than us. He definitely saw your episode of That So Raven. He must. He saw it. It must have been his favorite. He must watch it every night before bed. It's his favorite episode. And he, it was, that was the, actual inspiration he took when he was on iCarly. That That's must right. have been it. He was like, I'm going yeah. to pull from that. Right. So I inspired him. Uh, Julia inspired this is, this is a Harry crazy Styles. Story. That's I, like, I'm actually insane. I can't believe it happened. Like, I don't really think about it often. You could be in a movie with Harry Styles. Like, that is something oh. that could happen in the world. I could, fir- but I'm also, like, not into him right now at the moment. <laughs> Can we get okay. into that? Okay, let me. I feel, like yeah, really I, just, think should, I feel like we did no intro and I just went right into no, this. No, this is how it, the space this is. This is what the space is. The Taylor Swift and Harry Styles of it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Now, these are com- These are both, I feel like, complex fandoms in, they really in are. similar ways. Here's what I'll say I think being a Taylor Swift fan has never been easy, mm-hmm. no. it's never been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, really. Like, I, I really think when she came out with Antihero and she was like, it must be exhausting. I was like, you have no fucking idea. Oh. Like what we have gone through trying to defend you for <laughs> decades. <laughs> um, like <laughs> over it's all just, Twitter polls. It's so hard. Yeah. Like, I, I, and that's what's really amazing. I think that when you meet another Swifty, like true and true Swifty, you've been through wars together. Yeah. And you've been through the reputation era. Like oh, you've Lord. been through the through Kim, Kim K Kanye. stuff. Like yeah. you've been through so much. And you've been through like just the annoying things. Like when she wrote mean, that's the thing. Like Taylor always has something to say in yeah. the same way that I think Lena Dunham always has something to say. Right. Oh and Lord. sometimes I think we just don't say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's the answer. Yeah. Oh my God. Is, like <laughs> even in Endgame now, I'm like really getting it. Do you know Endgame by Taylor Swift? I think I've heard okay. it. It's off reputation. Ed Sheeran has a verse. Oh, I know And this song, he's yes. basically like, drama will follow you anywhere but the like the safest thing is just to ignore it believe me and i always thought he like wrote that line like to taylor i was like listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> like Did literally <laughs> so yeah like it's been exhausting being a taylor fan and it's also been so rewarding like when she has these highs even though like midnight's is not her best album and yet it's her highest whatever oh, wow. grossing you know I like heard that take yet. i will stand by it mm, um mm. it's still great i love her but she's difficult she's yeah. so difficult um mm-hmm. but she's also <laughs> like narrated all of my relationships and all of my heartaches and and she's a wonderful poet and 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 i had to deal with her dating harry styles yeah that wasn't fun for me no. like that, wasn't fun that, for that wasn't fun for us that was wasn't horrible. fun for anyone no, no. <laughs> that was actually horrible I, it wasn't fun it wasn't fun when she dated tom hiddleston or joe jonas, or joe when jonas. I was oh my god remember that i was like Actually, and they, can you and stop we got really good songs out of those. And it is also just like complex being in the Harry Styles fandom as well. Right. Mm-hmm. For a, I think this like For a similar, similar reason. Because he just is all over the place doing a bunch of things that we have to be out here defending. Like, no, he didn't spit on Chris Pine. Like, oh, what I, was that about? I would love to think that he did, though. <laughs> Just for the plot, <laughs> just for the absolute plot of it all, because also this was in his Olivia Wilde era. Yeah, yeah. which and was I can't wild. Say that I was there for that era. Not at all. I'm not here for. And it then either. like not I, so all. I made a really like personal choice to not go to Love on Tour. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Oh my god. It was like talk about this. Yeah. So basically, I since I've been with Harry since 2010. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just couldn't put up, and this is my own thing. I really couldn't put up with his global like uh fame Mm -hmm. it was just too much for me and i didn't love all the attention he was getting because i I felt like i was sharing him all of a sudden (laughs) yes there it is and yeah and so basically i said i'm not gonna and i you know i went to his other tours whatever and i said i'm not gonna be in a room full of Twenty thousand other girlies mm-hmm. thinking that they know him better and support him more. I'm yeah. not going to fight through that sea. I understand of the cross contamination between the One Direction fans and then the new like once yeah. you just found him last year. I respect anybody's entrance to loving anyone, but I'm just like, please understand. 
if I elbow you a little too hard right. in this pit, I, I'm having. I'm a allowed moment. to respect your elders. <laughs> respect Absolutely. your elders. Just respect Seniority. your elders. Like you can love, you can love whatever you love. It doesn't matter if you were like one year old when One Direction was a thing. Mm-hmm. But God. if that were the case, then there you just need to respect like your there elders. Are. There are. I yeah. swear to God, because we went, we did go to Love on Tour, and we were in the pit. And before he came on stage, mm-hmm. they were playing. He has this playlist that he plays of before course. and. Mm-hmm. And See, ooh, I don't even want to hear it. Best right, song it ever. Best song ever. He played right, best song ever. This, yeah. And we, our group, was the only people that singing knew the it. song. Mm-hmm. Yes. And do you I remember still. that music video when that dropped? Absolutely. Yes. Do you remember? So, absolutely. That remember. was some of the best cinema ever created. That was so good. It was a whole sketch. It was so and good. And they committed makeup. They lines. committed. Oh Zane was Zane, in drag. Zane actually did that. Yeah. Zane was in drag, and I was like, you know what? It's about time. Yeah, it is. it's about time. He's beautiful, so gorgeous. And he was Look at that, that face. And he was. It was, and I was just like, we were going hard. Right, we were yeah. going so hard. Everybody was looking at us sideways, and I wanted to scream. It was respect sh- your elders. Right. Yeah, no, respect yes. One Direction. Just Absolutely. To pivot, just the same way there are people who weren't there when One Direction was there, and they only know Harry. There are people who don't know Miley as Hannah. Like they didn't no. know. They don't know what Hannah. Are Montana you kidding? Is. Yes. I'm so serious. Yes. Are y'all Miley fans? Yes. Huge. Like okay, well, I think yeah, my, I sure I think that I'm pretty sure Miley was like my sexual awakening, my oh, gay sexual absolutely. awakening. Absolutely, mm. all of us. If not, yeah. if not Vanessa Hudgens, then Miley saw it. Like at the same time, yeah. I was like, it. We were both into her, but like at points, Amber was like, like I don't. It was Amanda's. I don't know anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, like I was <laughs> so was her into her. I was like, and then Miley did this, and then this, yeah, yeah, did yeah. This, and then you know this this dance move, like. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like, interesting. I would love to hear your guys' take on the bangers era of Miley because I saw that concert live. Uh, okay, I had to step. I had I, to step away. I had to yes. step out. I stepped away from that. I had that. to step I away. I respect that. Yes, <laughs> I had to step away from the dreadlocks as black women and the we twerk. Exactly. Break, That's why I just want to know, like, yeah. for y'all, how that felt as as a Miley stand for years before that. Yeah. yeah, I loved when I was in Europe when We Can't Stop dropped. Oh. Loved that's it. That's a good song. I loved We Can't Stop. Bangers has good songs. Like, and I don't listen to songs I, right I now. Do, I love Wrecking Ball. I love Love Money Party. I was mm-hmm. just blasting oh that God. in the car. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Love do you guys money, remember? Money, 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 money. I love that song. Um, how about this one? I think you guys will probably hate Do My Thing. I actually like that one. I actually one. do it's like that so song. Good. See, like, when I took a it's so good. It's so embarrassing. I do yeah. like that song. To go back and listen Bang to it, I'm like, bitch. this is really good. But when it, when you like, think I'm strange, bitch? bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Like a fucking hurricane. Yes, it's, it's good. good. But like Stay when everyone was listening lane, to it, I was like, I, I did can't like the album. I just couldn't like, I, I unfollowed her yeah. on like Twitter and Instagram. Well, she like, was going through it. She was all witnessed. But then she was allowed to fucking bounce right back and go to like Malibu. Exactly. Exactly. We also okay. talked about it. I also a like the yeah. like uh I think it's called like Dead Pets. Oh, Miley's Dead Pets. Oh, Miley's Dead Pets. I, yeah. I, I, I like one. That that one. That's wild to me that people don't know Hannah because there it's, is no Miley without Hannah and none. vice versa. Think and I how think how long it's I, been off air. You know what? I feel like she had the same, she was having the same moment as probably you as being like wanting to distance herself from her Disney Channel days. Yeah, I just yes. didn't do it in exactly <laughs> the same way. <laughs> <laughs> and then she like had to like find herself. She found her voice. She can do anything. She always wanted to be a rock star. Okay? Yeah. And she is. I'm I'm a rock star is what she said. Like, oh my God. I really am I a rock am star. I am a rock star. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh. Good night, That's everybody. Yeah. An amazing album. I love it that is. album. And I, I was on the show for that album. Oh. When the episode that I did, she performs Life, Life's What You Make It. Oh my and God. I didn't even know the song when we were filming that. Are you oh kidding? Because it hadn't dropped yet. And, oh my God. and I was like, iconic. this is pretty good. That's so special. But little do we know, it like became... That an was my anthem. favorite Global. An anthem. Yeah. Global. So let's Nobody's make it perfect. rock. Come on. Mm. So to, sp- to speak on the That's So Raven experience. Sure. I was watching, I was watching the second episode you were on with okay. Stanley. Mm-hmm. And do you remember these episodes or do, should I? Yes. Okay. No, I, okay. I, 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 okay. I experienced them. Because, well, yes, I know. But well, hold on. If like, people are listening, should, I was Sierra on That's So Raven. Right. Yes. So right. I was her next door. Her, I was her really annoying next door neighbor. And that's everything that people tell you is yes, that you're annoying. Yes. <laughs> but I want to say I was watching it. I was watching it in my age of 24. And I was like, you are so adorable. And we all thought you were annoying because we were little girls too. 
at, okay. the, at the same time. Of course we would. I'll take that. But right. you're like actually adorable. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. They put you in this, they put you in this like, all, like monochrome. I'm so obsessed with monochrome as you were saying. But right. Like the, this blue jacket and you had these blue mm-hmm. little puffies. Do you remember this outfit? Kind of. You were like so adorable. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But I was gonna ask about the scenario where you she like get like sends you off on a picnic with Stanley and then you immediately think you guys are dating, and okay. I was like, you might have to remind me about this. Right. Honestly, I'm like, okay, okay. yeah, because I don't remember this episode. I watched it literally this morning. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, she goes, she goes, okay, Stanley, you and Sierra go on over to Sierra's house, have this picnic because like Eddie and her are trying to like get rid of their annoying right, little neighbors. Right, right, right. And then Stanley comes around the back and is like. I need a woman and like (laughs) you come and you're like I can't find Stanley and then Stanley breaks up with you like in front and then you're like you stole my boyfriend yes and I'm like were we to Raven yeah to Raven right and I was like was was that age group were we young enough to like I guess form like that obsession over our little like when like dates that quickly at that age group that was such a trope I feel like yeah I will say that is not the first rule so I also did two and a half men when I was around that age maybe Mm -hmm. I think around that age and my character was also trying to date the son on um Mm. on two and a half men so I think there was something around that time where like they loved the idea of little girls being obsessed with these boys that want nothing to do with them. Yes. Um, Talk about being a fangirl. I know. Oh. Um, I even had to kiss the boy in Two and a Half Men on the Cheek Mm. in the show. And I was eight Mm. and I wouldn't do it. I would just go near him. And the director was like, so we do need a connection. We do need the lips to touch the cheek. And I was like, you're so little. I was so small. I mean, I was not fraternizing with boys at this age. I was dreaming right. about it, but yeah. I was not actually like, like I didn't have a what? boyfriend until I was 12. Wow. Yeah. How old were you on Raven? <laughs> Eight. Okay. Because that was 2000. It came out in 2004. Okay. Yeah. We filmed in 2003. What? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had like a brain <laughs> point. It's like, yeah, you know. I was like, that takes like, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, I was like, oh, it came out in 2008. And you filmed it in 2003. Like I imagine. just had, imagine no. that. That, was, oh that would be crazy. Goodness. No, but I think that it's like twofold because I feel like all of us around that age were like, oh my God, there's a girl on screen who's our age mm-hmm. and we are obsessed with Raven. So if Raven thinks she's annoying, guess we do too. Right. Sure. Like, even though it's like, we should have feel, felt like a camaraderie because you're our age. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, oh, someone our age is on Disney Channel. Like someone our age is on Disney Channel. But yeah. we were like, God, like if I was in her shoes, I would not be annoying to Raven. <laughs> right, 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 right. There's no, <laughs> Raven would absolutely love me. Raven I would love me. her age. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, like looking back on it, like if at this age too, or when I was like 16, if a little kid were following me around, I'd be so annoyed. Right. Yeah. I'd be like, literally get out of my face. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, one of the cool things about being on that show at that age was that it was like all of our favorite show. Yeah. Like everyone. It was also just such a good show. Like so it was, good. It's so funny. It holds up so it's, well. It really does. And like my whole family watched it. Like my parents loved the show. Like it was mm-hmm. just watchable. And I had been kind of working on a lot of shows that were inappropriate for my age group. So right. it was just kind of, and like boring for me. Yeah. Right. Um, so to get to be on something that everyone loved and like go into like the Baxter home. And I oh, felt like yeah. I knew where everything was already. Cause I'd yeah. been watching it for a year or however long it had been on. Like that was amazing to get mm-hmm. to finally be in something that my friends could watch yes. and like come to the taping. And that was sick. Oh. Yeah. Like, what was Raven like? She was amazing. I mean, yeah. at the same time, I was a kid. Yeah. So it's not like we had these great, like, heart to hearts. Like, right. I was whisked away to school anytime mm-hmm. we had a break. Um, but she was, I mean, she's so funny and so extremely easy to work with, extremely easy to play off of. And I've seen her a few times throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Just, like, randomly. I ran into her at, like, a juice place oh my god <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, so los angeles yeah in beverly hills yeah. um like ran into her there i've i ran into her on a lot a couple years ago and like she's always still been like incredible that's so and sweet. just like lovely and i feel like she's also really come into herself um like as a like the transition from being a child star that big mm-hmm. to them just like living the life she wants to live huge yeah. is amazing yeah. she's no really i mean she was also so like house um 
a child actor. Yeah. Like you both were child actors. She started acting when she was younger than me, I think. Wow. She was like a baby. Yeah. yeah, she was like on the Cosby show she when she was three. Like, yeah. Little bitty. Were you <laughs> a Disney Channel fan like in general before you like Major. Before Duff? Loved Lizzie McGuire, loved even Stevens. Mm. Those were probably like my favorite two favorites before mm-hmm. Raven and then like loved Raven, loved Hannah Montana. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The Even Stevens movie is one of the best oh, movies in so the world. Oh, it's so fantastic. I watched it again during the <laughs> pandemic. Same. It's so good. I also worked with the dad from Even Stevens. Oh my God. Tom oh. Virtue on a movie when I was like 10 and that was like peak celebrity for me. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my wow. God. I'm working with whatever his name is on the show. Wait, I think so it's Steven Steven. Steven, Steven. No, like, I think it's Lewis. It's Lewis. No, no, Lewis, no is, Lewis is his son. Is, I think yeah. it's Steven. It might be Steven. I think his name is Steven Stevens. Steve. What? On earth. I, don't, I, th- <laughs> I think I was too young to really grasp that show, even Steven. It was so good. And like, I should go back and watch Shia it. Shia LaBeouf was Plus. incredible on it. Really? Yeah. Like truly his acting is so good. Was that, was that like, were you, did you want to act like him? Um, I don't think he was like a role model. No. <laughs> Wait, when did, how, so how old were you when you started acting? I was seven. And, okay. and I like begged to, so, I really wanted to. So like Raven was like one year into it. Yeah. You, you're really good. At, like Thanks. you're a really good child actress. Like, Thanks. Sometimes, I don't know. I was talking to Amanda yeah, about some this. Some of them suck. Some of them suck. <laughs> no, but okay. Yes, okay, it's like, haha, but, but like, so, uh, it, there's something about the formula of different shows now where I don't know if it's like what they're getting taught in acting classes or like how they're being directed on set, but like the delivery is just not as authentic. It's just not hitting. Not as it's grounded. Not, yeah, it's not hitting. Mm-hmm. Like, I really believe like Sierra has something to tell Raven. <laughs> like, she's just <laughs> it's all, the next thing on her brain. And it's like really good. But <laughs> I feel like now sometimes it's just kind of like it's obviously a line. That's a Raven was such good writing. So yeah. it was really easy to bring that to life. I wasn't like in classes as a kid. My mom coached me on all my auditions and mm. like I I've always been very good at comedy. That's been like my my strong suit, I'll say, like comedic acting. I'm not mm-hmm. good at improv or oh, stand up. Yeah. Like I'm not a comedian. Mm-hmm. Um, but like well, like I can take a script and since I was a kid, I could be like, okay, I know how to make this funny. Mm-hmm. Um so it was really easy. That's it was a talent. really easy on That's So Raven in particular, I think a lot of, cause I did a lot of Disney shows and here and there sometimes like you would definitely be told like more, like bring it up, bring it up because mm-hmm. Disney is so heightened and so big. Right. And um, so that was hard for me to contend with as a, as a kid cause mm. it was just draining. It was just tiring. Yeah. Like You're those days were exhausting. Yeah. And they, Damn. you know, like I did this one show for Disney that never aired. Um, it was Ali and AJ had a show that was, oh, wow. Oh, wow. they were sisters who were witches and oh, they went with Wizards of Waverly Place instead. So this no. never, this never went, but it was so good. Ali and AJ are, I mean, I haven't seen them in years, but when I was working with them, they were the kindest people ever. I was also obsessed with their music. Mm-hmm. That's so nice. Um, and I was just like, you know, the 10 year old, like smart Alec who like <laughs> followed them around or right. whatever. And I remember there was like a scene where I had to be like, listening to a conversation and like the camera was right on my face and I was like my chin was like on a a bust or, or not a bust, like something that would hold up a bust you mm-hmm. know like a, okay yeah a pedestal uh, yeah like yeah. one of those things and I just had to be looking like side to side and like <laughs> okay the way that the director was like more. <laughs> I just like it haunts me to this day because I remember I was like, how can I look more Worse. to one side and like add an eyebrow in and like like it drains your body. Yeah, yes. and oh it's really hard. And people, I think, a lot of the time, like shit on comedic acting and sitcoms and multicams, and mm-hmm. I think it's the hardest stuff out there because it's so um, technical. Yeah. yeah, and you can't. I okay. I'm gonna get like whatever. Get Drama's it. hard. Okay, we get that. But a lot of the time, if you're like not a very good actor, you can just keep your face really still and say the words Mm -hmm. and like dramatic effect can come across Mm -hmm. uh, well enough to, you know, pass for a random show. Mm -hmm. But like you can't really hide being a bad comedic actor no, because it's all timing. It's all physicality. The director and the editor can do a a lot in editing. But Mm -hmm. like as far as, you know, being in the room and auditioning, you, you have to just laugh. be yes, on. You have to get the laughs. That's the yeah. answer. Yeah. And it's all timing. So the, I have always said comedy is harder than drama. Like mm-hmm. you have, cause drama, like you can lean into like very melodramatic music mm-hmm. or like someone crying yeah, or like, or, or really anything. But 
auditioning if you're not making people laugh if a show's not making somebody laugh like it's very black and white it's like this isn't working yeah as comedy i think that people are always so shocked when we see these comedic actors do a more dramatic role like a steve carell or something and people are like he can act and it's like obviously yes he's one of the funniest people on the planet like you think he doesn't have that in his you know, repertoire or whatever. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm never shocked when a comedic actor is incredible at drama because I'm like, yeah, of course some, they are. There's some knowledge about like human connection to like actually just know how to naturally have the room laughing. Definitely. I always uh, reference like Glenn Howerton on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Who does he play? <laughs> he plays Dennis. Oh, love. <laughs> and it, like, he's like classically trained. He's he went to so Juilliard. Good. Like, Did he? he he can sing really well. Like, he does like, like a amazing, beautiful falsetto. Yes. And he's just so funny, but also like so grounded and scary as Dennis sometimes too. Yeah. Amber, you need to watch Always I, Sunny. I, I've only seen because, bits and pieces. Oh, it's incredible. He's <laughs> so good. He's like one of my favorite comedic actors because yeah. he's also very, very good at drama, mm. you know? So speaking of like your work as an actor Mm -hmm. and also as a singer, like how do you think being a fangirl is central to your identity and how has it affected what you like to do, what you want to do with your life? I feel like when everyone's a teenager, it's very cool to not like things. Mm -hmm. I think it's very much like, Ew, that's lame. Like right. blah blah blah. But I mean, like now I'm thinking about it. I was such a Twilight fangirl. Like Ugh. the books. Like I went to the midnight releases at Barnes and Nobles dressed up as a vampire. Yes. Oh my goodness. Like you know, like I think when I was a teenager, I kind of started to get out of that. Like, wait, I actually love things, and yeah. I love loving things, mm-hmm. yes. and I would so much rather love something and geek out about it and just like. I don't know. It's just, it's, there's so much more joy in your life when you do love something. Mm-hmm. And so like, I remember for a long time, pop music was not cool to like, yeah, right? Like, like now it's, parties. yeah, like now it's, now it's very cool. I would mm-hmm. say again, but like, I used to be so embarrassed that I loved Taylor Swift and I loved mm-hmm. pop music and I loved all of that, but it, br- it brought me so much joy and it continues to bring me so much joy. And as far as it relates to my identity and my career, in I would say the last like four years I've become and this like sounds cheesy and dumb but like I've become my own really big fangirl because I this business will take every opportunity to tell you that you're wrong Mm -hmm. and that you're not enough and you're not this enough and that enough and you know you'll see everyone around you like skyrocketing and you'll just be like why am I still on the ground Mm -hmm. um and that's like a really lonely and sad way to live especially like I've been in my career for 20 years now which is a big milestone really to be like okay I've been doing this professionally for 20 years I'm clearly not gonna like be happy when it's just external validation when I book the job or when something airs so I had to figure out a way to like be happy every day in my life because Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy being unhappy Mm -hmm. and I've spent years being unhappy. So I think when I realized like, okay, I want to be happy and I really want to like myself and how I look and how I, what I have to offer, Mm -hmm. like being my biggest fan other than my mom, my mom is my biggest fan, but you know, like it's been really, really instrumental to my growth as an actor. Like I'm in acting class right now and I love being in acting class and I love like knowing that I know what I'm doing. Like, of Mm -hmm. course I want direction and I want notes and I want to collaborate. But like at the end of the day, this is like a Love Island thing, but like I back myself. Absolutely. I I really do because like I've been working so hard Mm -hmm. and I do have, you know, enough of a resume to prove that like, okay, I don't think I'm in the wrong field. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, as long as I'm there being like, I know I did good work on this audition. I know I did good work on set today. That's all that I have control over. And it's so freeing. That was so beautiful. I I agree with so much of what you were saying. And I think that, so basically fangirling helped, fangirling over something else, like helped you see how you you deserve to be lifted up the the same way you were lifting anything else that you love up. Absolutely. That's so. That was more eloquent. But (laughs) But yes, I meant that. (laughs) that that, But that's so amazing. That's so beautiful because I feel like I have also started just doing that in life. How great does it feel? It's just like, yeah. Yeah. I'm cute. Let's leave the house. Yeah. Things change from when you're a child to a teenager to a young adult. And it's great that you 
can carry that with you and mm-hmm. like you know it's like yes this is what i want to do this is what i'm passionate about yeah like i think pa- yeah. fangirling gives you also passion like yeah. to feel to be able to have the space and allow yourself to feel passion and like mania about something yeah. is it's like it's literally cathartic it's yeah. literally an act of catharsis and all the stuff that you listed like twilight um mm-hmm. pop music taylor swift even love island like oh, now yeah, like absolutely huge, huge absolutely me. all those things that i listed gr- it's like what teenage girls like and yeah. it's like the people shitting on stuff that teenage and girls teenage like. girls run the world they do everything would flop without teenage girls and i love the, that you were saying that it's like just taking away the external validation, you genuinely have the want to do it. Like yeah. this is the right thing for you. That's act like that's acti- actively how fangirls present because they're out here screaming whether yeah. everybody's like making fun of them or not. They're yeah. like, okay, I'm still really happy about this. Yeah, and I don't care how you're judging me because I'm happy about yeah. it. Yeah, and like also nothing's prettier than like seeing like just, just a group of happy people dancing mm-hmm. and you know screaming, like yeah oh my god my best memories have been in full yeah full fangirl mode mm-hmm. of just like dancing mm-hmm. to like I what comes to mind is I went to a lord concert way before oh. the pandemic oh my god and my best friend at the time like we were both there and perfect places was playing and we were just dancing and I'd never felt such like full body euphoria absolutely I know. Yes. You know? that is how it did you okay did you get tickets to Taylor Swift Uh-oh. I did not oh my god I'm so sorry <laughs> did you guys Moment of silence. no so we, we are not in the Taylor Swift community but we respect okay, everyone that's okay yeah mm-hmm. we're from Tennessee <laughs> we're from Memphis Tennessee and so you know She's big there. Yeah. Of course. Which and she's not even from there. She's not no, from she's there. She's from Pennsylvania. That's right? Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. However, the Tennessee girlies love her. Yes, love to put on their, sure. their cowgirl boots and go to the and concerts. And leave school and at lunchtime to make it to Nashville. For, for, for me, Taylor Swift was like, our neighbor played our song mm-hmm. and was like, listen to this and yes. we were like and i was like what who is this this is the best song i've ever heard in no, my she's life she's on to something here. she's on to something and so i love i've i've always loved her hits uh-huh. i love 1989 but mm-hmm. i i've never been a swifty mm-hmm. it, you it's really daunting i feel like if you didn't start at the beginning it's very difficult to just jump in mm-hmm. without the backstory mm-hmm. and the trials and tribulations and the years and years of you know just a commitment yeah like i don't think i could start today and be like, let's see, yeah. <laughs> like, how's her discography? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some, so that's fine. That's the thing about music art- artists. I feel like that is daunting. Is like, for me, watching forty five hours of Doctor Who is less daunting <laughs> than listening to an entire Absolutely. discography for some reason. Okay, because it's like music. It's so short, but it's so emotional. Mm-hmm. It's so. It's a song is so short, but it's like visceral. Yeah. You know, it's also yeah. Okay, belting a song. Have y'all thought about this? It's kind of like meditating because it's breath work. Oh my god! (laughs) Like the like diaphragm intact. Yes, like (laughs) my thought is only on like keeping this list like lyric while I'm driving. Like I after after like a really good belting song comes off, like goes off. I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm. Needed Centered. that. Yeah. Needed that. Are you guys like musical theater girlies absolutely. at all? Absolutely. I, I absolutely. I I love my select musical theater. Like I sure. I, I yeah. did musical theater since I was in second grade. Okay. Love like Sweeney Todd in the Heights, right, right, right. Into the Woods, Always Just in the Ensemble. Mamma Mia, me. Chicago. That's I could go right. on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But but I all all my favorite like movies, TV show have music in them that's why i'm a disney channel girl that's yes. why i'm like a glee girl yes you're a like, glee girl okay see, I, I, was, missed, I missed it I oh missed really it. Was, damn yeah. i just feel like when people sing their emotions it's so much more emotional it's yeah it's it, it's relayed in a better way <laughs> but what about you I, I'm, I'm sure i mean you're a singer yeah i mean i love musical theater yeah. i was just thinking like my best belting songs in the car meditating driving mm-hmm. they're like you know, like maybe this time from Cabaret. That's right. Yes. Or like a song from Smash and just like gripping the steering wheel and like <laughs> veins just popping out of your neck. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. Don't rain on my parade. Oh. Yes. Please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Such a relief. All of those. What is your dream role? Sally Bowles in Cabaret. I would love to like just step into that for six months. Mm-hmm. No longer. I don't want to do broadway mm-hmm. like that i don't want i want a life it's tiring um i also feel like sally bowles is like 
attainable like you can still live and do that role as opposed to like if you're alphaba mm. you can't you can't you can't talk to anyone else like you just have no. to save it all honestly like emma stone has done it mm. she's done everything yeah that i would love to emma do stone? she was i saw her as sally bowles wow. on broadway so you know and like her role in easy a which i played the young yeah. version of her <laughs> in that um that's like a dream acting role for me, I would say, mm -hmm. because it's comedic and it's heartfelt and there's a musical number in it. Like, are you yes. kidding? Oh, like, yes! And you're that working with like awakening. Penn Badgley. Like, yeah. I mean, that must have been fun. Yeah. Now, you know, I can't imagine that that was too much of a hard job for her. No. <laughs> oh my God. That so was good. That sounds just exactly. like it. <laughs> I love AZA. What was your experience with the That So Raven fandom? Like, it was it was big like yeah. when it came out i remember like i would go to like costco with my mom and like there would be a line of kids like following us throughout the aisle oh, oh my, my god gosh. like it was really it was really crazy especially when it first came out um and i will say that like to this day i still get recognized from that so raven yeah. um when i was at usc mm -hmm. i you know blaze pizza yes someone who worked there gave me a free pizza because oh, she was right. like <laughs> you were sierra yes. oh my God. Um, <laughs> yeah you're everybody's was, neighbor yeah <laughs> and then there was a, another big so so yeah at the time it was very cool but there wasn't like social media right it really yeah. wasn't well we were babies yeah so mm. like no one no one had that it would just be like people would ask for pictures a lot in person and then mm -hmm. sometimes I'd be like out eating with my family and like a flash would go off and I'd be oh like oh you know Stop. just like ask just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't gonna be a cute photo <laughs> um but yeah there were like you know websites and message boards where people would talk to me and stuff and that was cool um but then it, there was a re emergence of like the nostalgia and everything yeah. with TikTok like yeah. over the pandemic so I joined TikTok in like 2020 and that was really affirming in a lot of ways. Cause I always, it was weird when I was younger or like middle aged, I guess mm -hmm. I was very embarrassed about my like mm -hmm. Disney channel work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why, but I think it was some sort of like, I don't, I don't know what it was. I clearly need to think about that in therapy, but I was like, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Like it's embarrassing, yeah. like, you know? And I also was like bullied a lot in school for acting. I was not mm -hmm. like, you know, so people, people connect. did not think it was cool at my school. Just yeah. like random yeah. people you know yeah. dead. um and so it was something that i tried to hide and like the idea of being like a child actor was like demeaning to me i was like mm. no i'm just an actor you right, know it doesn't matter right. that i did it as a kid um but then i like kind of leaned into the tiktok thing at least for a second and the response like was really really it felt very good i mean there That's were also good. people who were not nice but yeah. Yeah. i'm so used to that at this point that like mean comments i mean they still hurt but I don't really care. And yeah. so it was cool to, to see that people still, you know, 15 years later, remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like, yeah. yeah. We I remember. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's again, p playing into like this shame element of fangirling. Yeah. I feel like people were like, who, even if they did like, that's so Raven or like Disney Channel when we were in middle school to like high school to college, like it was still kind of like, oh, we don't talk about Disney Channel though. Like don't talk yeah. about like yeah. high school musical. Don't talk about, being obsessed with all that stuff that's for kids mm -hmm. and like i used to judge other people who had been on disney who like posted about it a lot i was mm. like mm, why are they bringing that up <laughs> like you know and now it's like oh no they were actually being smart and like building a fan base and like helping their career whereas yeah. i was like i will not post anything about that <laughs> yeah i mean well it's also when you get older like you were saying you you had such a cool life like when you were 17 you went to the yeah it's crazy to that the one direction premiere which is insane i actually think i might have seen that interview now that I'm i have about to it. Have, because i've seen every interview ever YouTube. i must have been like because <laughs> if i saw it i must have been like that's sierra from that's <laughs> right. interviewing one direction right that's what i'm thinking weird how did you get in that stomach, stomach? <laughs> it was just a bounce house cool yeah cool. cool nice but i wonder how hypothetically in the show i know because oh, she's there. like then she gets out she and gets Raven's out. like, Raven's how'd you get out? out? And she's like, well, I don't remember, but it wasn't easy. Oh my like, God. It was hard. That's funny, Oh my right? God. Yeah, honestly. Thank you so much for being on the show. Is there anything you want to say? Last comments? Um. Yeah, no, I'm just happy to have been here. And honestly, like, it's really nice to just uh, like congregate over liking things. Yeah. That's just, it, it fills me with 
endorphins. Yeah. Yes, just Cause I could talk about, yeah, I could talk about this stuff all day. It's so lovely to be obsessed with, with things. And we've, we've grown up in a really lovely time. Like we mm -hmm. have been given so many cultural moments. That's yeah. right. To experience. Yeah. So. We, we saw it as it yeah. happened. It's been special. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? I don't know when this is coming out, but I'm on NCIS right now. I have a couple episodes airing May 15th and the 22nd. Oh so my goodness. if this comes out after, then they're streaming on Paramount Plus. So Ooh, check watch. it out. Yes. Check out Juliet on NCIS. Yes. Follow us at fangirl.central on Instagram. Yes. Um, um, what's, what's, do you, what's the TikTok handle? Everything is just my name, at Juliet Golia. At Juliet Golia on yeah. all socials. On all socials. And remember, if you like this episode, if you like this show, leave us a five star review wherever you're listening to this yes. on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anything. Um, we also are doing our musical review Disney Vortex coming up uh, May 25th and in June. So check that out online and, and keep it chaotic. Keep it chaotic. Woo. And the music comes on. Yeah. <laughs>